Hello everyone, Christine McKee here from the Emerging Technology team. Let's take a closer look at how you can create a group as well as explore the updated security settings for groups inside of Flipgrid. So I've gone ahead and logged into my educator account and you can see that when you log in and you arrive at the educator dashboard, you should automatically be in the groups tab. Here you can see all of your groups. To create a brand new group, you're simply going to click the plus group button here at the top right corner. When you first start to create the group, you are going to start in the details tab. Here inside details, you can edit the theme where you can choose from a variety of artwork created by Microsoft, or you can click this button here to add your own custom image either a JPEG or a PNG to serve as your banner for your group. I'm going to go ahead and select a graphic and click add. And once I've edited my theme below, I can see that I'm the lead educator for this group. So I will own the group. Below, I can name my group. Now, when you're giving a specific name to a group, you can name it in a variety of different ways. Maybe you want to name it for your home room. Maybe you want to name it for a specific subject area and then all the topics inside of this group will be related to that specific subject. Or maybe you want a more narrowed uh, subject matter. For instance, I could name it daily check-ins and then use this group to create topics that promote social and emotional well-being. Once you have named your group, notice that underneath you're going to choose how you're going to manage your members. In other words, what security settings are you going to put in place to allow your students to access this group? You can choose from email or domain, username or Google Classroom if you've set up the Google Classroom integration in your profile. Once you've set up the Google Classroom integration in your profile, you can actually click Google Classroom and connect to your class roster. And then students who are listed in the class roster, they will be the students that will have access to your group. All right, if you choose to use email or domain, which is highly recommended in ECSD, what you're going to do is add the domains of students. And I would highly recommend adding in the teacher domain as well. So remember, the domain for students in ECSD is at school.ecsd.net. And the ECSD domain for teachers is ecsd.net. You could also include specific students' emails. And you can use a template to upload a CSV file. Now, the other option you have is username. If you click username, notice that, again, you can use a template to upload a CSV file of all this information. But you can add in student's name, last name or last initial, and then create a custom username for the student and then they would use that custom username to access the group. But we're gonna go with email or domain. Now, before I click create group, let's scroll back up to the top. I wanna to take you in to settings. Here in settings, we can choose whether we want the group to be active right away so that the students can access the group or we can have it hidden if we want to use this group in the future. Notice that you can also set your notifications. Do you want email notifications for activity in the group daily, weekly, or every time a new video or comment is added, or never? Also, do you want to allow notifications for members? You can turn this off if you don't want students to receive notifications. All right, once you've edited the settings and the details of your group, go ahead and click Create Group. Notice that once the group is created, you are automatically prompted to share the group with your students or learning community. We can close this uh, because we can share our group at any time. 
in an upcoming video, I will show you how to add a co-lead as well as share your group with your students.